Hello everybody once more. <coughs> I've had various inquiries and letters and emails etc from people who want to know uh, basically about whiskey investment. Now I can tell you this, there's no better investment in anything and you can include bank shares, diamonds, gold, nothing pays a return at the moment like single malt whiskey and the biggest the best advice I can give you is simply go for the mothballed abandoned and closed distillery you cannot go wrong with them I'll give you a few examples here so you can see what I mean Lockside distillery 37 years old my goodness <coughs> well Lockside this distillery is I, what sticks out in my mind about this distillery is it only lasted about 40 years. Mm -hmm. I think it was closed in 1992 and completely demolished in, uh, oh God, was it 203, 204 or 205? I'm not quite sure. But that's when, so it, it wasn't a very long lasting distillery, mm -hmm. but they did produce one of the most delicate malts I've ever tasted. And if anybody's interested, this is a good, if you're ever interested in investing, this is a good, a very, very good investment, very I good, believe, yes, because yes. of its short life yes. and it's becoming scarcer and scarcer and scarcer. Yes. I believe I have a bottle up there that I bought for like $100 not long since it'll be well in excess of maybe $1,000 at the moment. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a really, uh, don't quote me on that, but around that, I've got the, spark, the start somewhere. Excellent. I'll have a little taste of it now. Now this is a lock side for instance. I purchased this maybe five, six, six years ago maximum. I bought it for 69 Australian dollars. Today you wouldn't buy it for 500 dollars. 45 years old to me. Yeah. I know exactly where this came from. This came from my good, good friend in Belgium, Axel Brook. He's a whiskey dealer in Belgium and he sends me these up. He sends me these absolute gems. Thank you, Axel. <clears throat> to mention, yeah, this is a whiskey that's uh, been opened, closed, opened, closed, opened, closed, till finally the Japanese bought it, I think, in 1950. And uh, they went into production big time. In fact, they became one of the biggest distillers in Scotland. I think their output was around 12 million litres a year, which is a phenomenal amount. It's a nice, sophisticated whisky, pretty well known, and uh, and very much liked as well. Uh, I know one thing. I try to remember something specific about every distillery, and then it kind of jogs my memory. But what I do remember about Tremaine, they use they have the ponds what collects the water from the cooling system, and they grow young salmon in it, oh. which is because it's nice and warm, and they grow young salmon before they're passed on to the farms. Oh. Anyway, we'll get on and we'll have a taste of this. This is a this is well, this will be the oldest whiskey we've had tonight. I think I believe. Absolutely. Oh dear me. This is a sophisticated, elegant whisky, and so it should be after 45 years in the barrel, eh? Yes. <coughs> Dallas uh, Yeah, a 30 year old Dallas Dew. Uh, Blackwater Valley, that's the Gaelic name for this whisky. This whisky um, is a Space Cider, closed in 1983. I remember that specifically because of the year my mother died. I remember this just as really closing. Uh, it's, it's a fine drop of whiskey. Uh, this is a very rare bottle. It's a whiskey that uh, has, has increased in value, but not to a great extent. But it's still a good buy. Um, most of the whiskey from this distillery now is, is needed in. It was needed in blends, and it's getting scarcer and scarcer. To put out some good impressions, I've got one here. I've got actually I've got a Cooper's Choice up there with. Us. It's a delicious Dallas do. I'll have a taste of it now. So it make a good investment? Yes, it would. But not, I can give you better ones, but this still, you cannot go wrong with it. You'll never lose money with any of these whiskies we've drunk tonight. Especially this one. This one is a nice, steady, progressive whiskey as regards finance. Oh, there's got a real warm mouthfeel and a nice finish.
mm. not too, don't pack too much of a punch, but it's a pleasant drink. Mm. It's a drink um, you could offer anybody mm. and, and they'd enjoy it. Uh, pity is closed, but nevertheless, cheers Dallas Do. Right, this is a Dallas Do. It's increased in price, but it's not as much as some of them. I bought this in 2004 for $94. It's now worth 400 and something dollars. It hasn't expanded in price that much, but nevertheless, it's worth three times what I paid for it. Okay. Now I'll, I'll just go through the collection and give you a few uh, whiskies <coughs> that I'd advise you to buy. There's a relatively low price at the moment, but will come higher. Now uh, here I've got one in the Levin. That's a Lowland whiskey. Reasonably cheap at the moment, around $150. That one will go skyward, so it's a good investment whiskey. Put it in a box and forget it. And look at the price in seven or eight years, you'll be, you'll be astonished. One of the biggest, one of the biggest is the Port Helen. Six years, maybe less, six years ago I bought this at Dan Mercy. I bought four bottles because one of my favourite whiskies. It's a lovely whisky. I bought four bottles of this old man cask and two of my friends bought two bottles each. I think we drank a couple and we saved these. Now these I remember distinctly, I paid in Dan Murphy's $170 or $180. They are now worth $900 or thereabouts, between $800 and $900 a bottle. And this is a bottle, if you ever get your hands on a Glen, uh, a Big Barn, a Port Ellen, buy it and leave it and you'll see your money absolutely triple, quadruple maybe in 10 years, because the stocks are just about gone. Glen Lockie, 31 years old. This is an absolute treasure. Highland Distillery from Fort William. Opened in nine, 18, uh, clo opened originally, I think, 18 in the 1890s, and and closed in 1983. 83 was a horrible year for me, because there were three or four top distilleries closed. This was one of them, and. Um, Nevertheless, it's, a, it's a, a great investment whiskey, is this one. Should you ever want to invest in whiskey and you get your hands on a Glenlocky, this has jumped out of all proportion in price in the last 10 years. years Mostoy, 32 years old. This is a real collector's malt. If ever you can get your hands on this, this malt will just go one way and that's all. Mostoy, it comes out of the Milton Duff stable and the interesting thing about this whiskey is it was only in production by Milton Duff for only 17 years. Wow. Most of this whiskey originally was used for blends but they put a single malt out but mostly I think uh, from memory Duncan Taylor bought some and uh, Gordon McPhail in fact I've, I've got one up here from Gordon McPhail in my collection uh, 1979 Mostoy, which is, I'm almost positive, is the same as what's in this this whiskey. Um, a real collector's item. This is Mostoy. We drank this earlier on, and this is another whiskey because of its rarity. It's gone up in price now. I bought this in 2006 for, I believe, about 150, 155 dollars. It's now worth just under a thousand. Maybe nine hundred sixty, some, some nine hundred sixty, nine hundred seventy dollars. So that's a good buy. That's and if you ever see one, grab it because there's only one way this whiskey will go, and that's Skywoods. Capadonic, twenty nine years old. Uh, Capadonic from Murrayshire, I believe. Um, this distillery has been opened and closed more times than a toilet door so I'm not going into closed and dates because I simply can't remember them all to be honest. But what I know about this still is from memory is it used to be uh, Glen Grant. It used to be uh, the second distillery of Glen Grant. But British law one time stopped the distillery using two distilleries with the same name. Right. So they changed the, the second Glen Grant distillery to Capadonic. 
What else do I remember about this? Yes, it's the main component of um, Shivers Regal. If you've drunk Shivers Regal, you've you've had some uh, Cappadon. Is, is this a closed distillery? Oh, yeah, this is a closed distillery, yes. It's uh, closed and demolished in... Uh, closed in 2008, I believe, and demolished in 2010. Right. No more to Never be Never to be had again. Yeah, another good investment whiskey. Oh, there's lots of character in this whiskey. By God, I could put some of this away with no trouble whatsoever. Uh -huh. And another one, another good investment whiskey is this Capodonic. Mm. Well, there's ne never going to be any more, huh? No, never, never again. Closed mm. and gone mm. forever. Mm. Cheers, anyway. Cheers, John. Now, this is a Ladyburn Ayrshire. I ordered a bottle of this from a good friend, Ant, uh, Anton Onius, in, in Germany, who has a used collection. He let me have one, and I remember he let me have it for $250, and it was doing me a favour, because it would have been worth three to four hundred, but I had it for $250. And of all the whiskies in this room, this at that time was one of my prized possessions, or wants, I should say, wants, and didn't it come here, and the the, it was broken in the box. The only whiskey I've ever had that was broken. And I was desolate. So I rung him, well I wrote to him, sent him the pictures of the broken bottle, and that man wasn't he kind. And he sent me another bottle free. Now I remember I paid $250 for this, which was about cheap, but this is another one, around the $3,000 a bottle worth today. Before I wrap up this evening, <clears throat> I'd like to thank some people who have been in touch with me and I've met over the years, some very, very nice people, and I'd like to thank them very much to name through this Axel Brook, uh, uh, top, top whiskey dealer in Belgium, who sends me his fantastic samples to try. There's uh, Women Bridget from Germany, who's been my mainstay and my biggest collector of whiskies that are unavailable here in Australia. They get me them and buy them for me and, and send them over. Of course, I pay them back. Thank you very much, Bridget and Wim. There's Claude from France, who is always uh, picking my brain, uh, wanting to know this and sending me samples to tell me what, what I think of them and give him some kind of report. And numerous people, so I thank you all sincerely. Thank you all sincerely. Recently, I, met, I had made a new friend, Greg Donovan. He's been trying to get in touch with me for years, and he managed to get through my producer my address and wrote to me. Well, Greg Donovan looked at my whiskey. He's got quite a nice little collection himself. Uh, I was very impressed. And uh, anyway, the next thing he's done, he says, I noticed you have no Tasmanian whiskey. Well, I could, I could write, uh, we could do an, um, a, a film on Tasmanian whiskey on its own. But um, anyway, he, next thing I know, he says, I've taken a bottle out of my collection and I'd like you to try it. So I said, well, it's an appreciation. I'll try it in the next film I make. And here we are doing just that. Thank you, Greg. Well, here it is. Before I say anything about Tasmania, that Tasmanian whisky, there's no one, and I mean Scotland, America, Ireland, there's no one made so much progress in 30 years as Tasmania. They've come on from a whisky that I went, I was down there about 30 years ago, and I went into this whisky distillery, I won't mention the name, but I, and I said, oh, I was being polite, and I said, yeah, that's very nice, but quite honestly, it was awful. But in 30 years, they've made such advances. In fact, they outscore some of the Scots whiskies. The only trouble with Tasmanian whiskey, as I can find, I see, is it's just too damned expensive, and they can't compete because they haven't got the output, the capacity to bring down the prices, so it's very, very expensive. And I can't go to a... Um, a Tasmanian whiskey day and see, say a Sullivan's Coast or Lark and it's dearer than a Lagavulin or a Flake. I just can't bring myself to do it but nevertheless I know this Tasmanian whiskey is a credit to Australia and the distillers how much it's advanced and this is one I've never tasted I know nothing about but I'll 
give you my opinion now. Like I said before, it's a lovely, delicate nose. Wow. Straight away, I can tell this isn't a Scots whiskey. I, it's just, I don't know whether it's experience, but I can tell this isn't a Scots whiskey. But I'll tell you what it is, it's a bloody good whiskey. She was that. Well done Tasmania and well does O'Brien. Where is he from in Tasmania, John? I think he's from Hobart. It says the old Hobart distillery. Yes. It? In my eyes, I what proud of the Yes, old Hobart. But I'll tell you what, be proud of yourselves because that's some whiskey. I just don't know how much a bottle it is. I've never actually seen it, heard of it, or have had anything to do with it. But I'll tell you this, I recommend it. It's a beautiful, beautiful, well-rounded whiskey. Thank you, Greg. Thank you very much. Okay, then, <clears throat> well, that's it for this film. I've enjoyed making it. I hope you enjoy watching it. Uh, remember, as regards these whiskies that's increased in prices, uh, the, the best round tip I can give you is to go for closed and distilleries, as I said before, but I am not a financial advisor. I have it entirely up to you to do your own research when you buy a bottle of whiskey. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I've made this film. I think it'll be my last because my eyes are going and I'm, I still do the odd uh, lecture here and there. Uh, but apart from filming, it's got a bit too much for me. Now, as you see, we've drank about 14 whiskies tonight and, you know, I've, uh, I've kind of time I packed it in. And, uh, but anyway, thank you all for your emails. I'm delighted to know and hear from most of you. It's been a very, very interesting last 10 years. Thank you all very much and the best of luck and good drinking.